Question number one, what is idiobatic processes? It is happen if a parcel of air expands and cools or compresses and warms with no interchange of heat with its surroundings. Question number two, how would one normally obtain the environmental lapse rate? They are measured twice daily by release of regisone balloons. Question number three. Why are moist and dry adiabatic rates of cooling different? It is because the dry rate is 10 degrees Celsius over 1000 meter with unsaturated air. The moist rate is lesser because heat added during condensation offset some of the cooling due to expansion. Question number 4. How can atmosphere be made more stable or more unstable? The atmosphere is always absolutely stable when the environmental lapse rate is less than the moist adiabatic rate. Question number 5. If the atmosphere is conditionally unstable, what does this mean? What condition is necessary to bring on instability? Conditionally unstable atmosphere is a condition that exists when environmental lapse rate is less than the dry adiabatic rate but greater than the moist adiabatic rate. The environmental lapse rate lies in between moist, dry, and jabatic lapse rate. Instability occurs in the atmosphere at which an air parcel could be lifted to an altitude where it becomes saturated. If the ATM continues to be unstable, air parcel, parcel can continue to rise and become saturated creating large cumulus clouds. Question number 6. Explain why an inversion represents an extremely stable atmosphere. A stable ATM occurs only when the temperature difference between the air near the surface and the air at the top is very small. This means that at least one layer of certain thickness in the ATM is stable. An inversion is where the air above is warmer than the air below. Normally, the earth heats faster than the air above, creating warmer conditions near the ground. In an inversion, the air at the top is warmer than the air near the surface. Air parcel will generally not become warmer than the air above, thus limiting vertically movement of air. When there is limited movement of air, the atmosphere is very stable. Next question. Why are cumulus clouds more frequently observed during the afternoon than at night? It is because it is because of daytime solar heating. As the sun heats, the earth's surface thermals are created and air rises. Next. Every day in summer, a blizzard occurs over the Great Plains. Explain where and why. It is because on many summer days, a blizzard occurs somewhere over the Great Plains. A blizzard happens every day somewhere over the Great Plains because precipitation starts as a snow above 12,000 feet AGL. That snow falls and melts before it reaches the ground as rain because it enters a warm dry section of air. Question number 10. Why do most thunder thunderstorms have flat tops? The reason for this shape is due to the fact that the clouds has reached the stable part of the atmosphere and the rising air is unable to puncture very far into this stable layer. The diameter of a typical cloud droplet is 100 times smaller than the typical drain drop. Question number 11. List four primary ways in which clouds form. This is the sum clouds and how they form. First, water vapor evaporates in the air. The water or ice that make up clouds travels into the sky within, an, within air as water vapor, the gas form of water. Next, water vapor condenses to form a cloud. It's easier for water vapor to condense into water droplets when it has particles to condense upon. And last, clouds form in a different way. Question number 12. Explain why rain shadow form on the downwind or leeward side of a mountain. It is because prevailing winds carry air towards the mountain range. As the air rises up over a mountain range, the air cools, water vapor condenses, and clouds form. This dry air produces a rain shadow. Number 13. On which side of mountain or windward or leeward would like lenticular clouds most likely form? A lenticular cloud 
is normally developed on the downwind side of a mountain or mountain range. This occurs when stable moist air flows over a mountain, creating a series of oscillating waves. Question number 14. What is the primary differences between a cloud droplet and raindrop? Rain droplets are much larger than cloud droplets. They are 100 times bigger. Number 15. Why do typical clouds droplets seldom reach the ground as rain? It is because rain droplets are much larger than clouds droplets. They form when many clouds droplets come together. And the upward air current can no longer suspend them. The condensation needed to form a rain droplet is a very slow process and thus most of the cloud droplets do not form rain droplets. Number 16. Describe how the process of collision and coalescence produces rain. Large clouds droplets fall faster than smaller droplets. This means that large droplets can grow even larger by overtaking and colliding with smaller droplets in their path. This merging is called coalescence. Number 17. How does the ice crystal process produce precipitation? What is the main premise behind this process? In an environment of ice crystals and super cold cloud drops, the ice will grow at the expenses of the super cold drops. This required over ice is less than the required over water at the same temperature. Number 18. Explain the main principle behind cloud seeding. Cloud seeding involves modifying cloud structure to increase in the chance of precipitation. Cloud seeding adds small ice-like particles to clouds. Usually, silver iodide particles are used. These particles act as additional condensation nuclei. Number 19. Explain how clouds can be seeded naturally. Natural cloud seeding occurs when fall streaks composed of ice crystals from serious clouds fall into cumulus or stratus clouds. Lower in the atmosphere, the ice crystals act like seeds to start the formation of larger crystals which leads to raindrop formation. Number 20. How does rain differ from drizzle? Drizzle drops tend to be small, falling much slower than rain. On the other hand, Raindrops are bigger and fall slightly faster. Number 21. Why do heavy showers usually fall from cumuliform clouds? Why does steady precipitation normally fall from statiform clouds? Different types of rain fall from different types of clouds. Cumuliform clouds typically bring heavy showers, whereas steady precipitation comes from statiform clouds. Cumuliform clouds have strong convection current and air circulates vertically. The clouds are large and move quickly over an area, bringing rain that only lasts a short amount of time. It gives heavy shower due to an unsta unstable atmosphere. Stratiform clouds are large and cover a vast area. This leads to persistent steady rain showers. Stratiform clouds also have smaller convection currents which prevent the sudden changes in rainfall seen in cumuliform clouds. Number 22. Why is it never too cold to snow? But the atmosphere must contain moisture, moisture to generate snow and very cold air contains very little moisture. Once the air temperature at ground level drops below around 10 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius, snowfall becomes unlikely most places. Next, how do the atmospheric condition that produces sleep differ from those that produce hail? A sleep forms when there is a layer of above freezing temperatures below cloud base but the temperatures at the surface are below freezing. While hail is produced inside a cumulonimbus cloud by a creation of super cold liquid water onto a large frozen embryo caught in a strong updraft. Number 26. Describe how standard rain gauge measures precipitation. When the measurements are taken, the height of the water in the small graduated cylinder is measured, and the excess overflow in the large container is carefully poured 
into another graduated cylinder and measured to give the total rainfall. Number 27. How can depth of snow be measured? It can be measured by the use of a ruler.